Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Minette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs with Minette. And during the month of December, I am focusing on creating an end of year reflections journal. And last week I showed how to create this the journal. This year I'm really, or this week I'm starting to really focus on some of the different prompts and um, questions that I want to ask myself at the end of the year. I also woke up this morning with having a histamine reaction to something and allergies, so I may be muting myself um, with a, a bit of a, a runny nose and may sound a little foggy. I feel absolutely fine. I was up early this morning getting started on the process and answering my questions. And one of the things that I have been talking to a lot of people about lately, and this is especially true as part of our Mindful Patterns program, is how do we bring more ritual and more sacred experience into our creative practice? It's something that I love to share and to talk about. And some of the ways that I do that are just, most importantly, keeping it really simple. So I've already spent about an hour, hour and a half doing some journaling. It's a full moon today. It's Wednesday, December 7th. So I did an oracle card reading this morning around the full moon, which was really beautiful. I did some journaling. But I love just simply lighting a candle. This is an absolutely beautiful candle, a fennel mint soy candle that I got when I was in the Adirondacks at my friend Christine's Philosopher's Camp. And I have different altar spaces with sacred objects. And often I like to just pull together a couple of these objects. This is a beautiful little raccoon ceramic horse. I love uh, animal symbolism and do a, a lot of my art tends to focus around animals. And I have this beautiful crystal. So sometimes it's as simple as just gathering a few objects, taking a few deep breaths, to get myself centered and grounded. Maybe asking myself a question or setting an intention. And it doesn't have to be complicated. I think we can get ourselves really caught up in having really elaborate processes and experiences. And what I'm finding is that the simpler my rituals and practices are both spiritually and creatively, the more likely I am to, to stick with them. So here is my 2022 end of year reflections journal that I made from canvas boards. I showed how I did this last week. I made a title page. Our day one question was all about what was 2022 like for me? Yesterday, I had fun creating this kind of quite crazy spread about what am I celebrating about 2022? What am I celebrating? And I loved this crazy picture that of all these animals having a party and they feel like community. I'm celebrating having moved to a new community, celebrating my first Christmas and in my new home and all the wildlife in this beautiful area I live in in Loveland, Colorado. And I did some writing of other things that I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating the beautiful sunflowers that bloom here in late summer. They were everywhere and stunning on my walks and celebrating the launch of our Mindful Patterns program. That's something that my son Connor and I are working on. And I'm celebrating new directions. I put this compass in here, right? So I love coming back and just looking at, and I'm going to have to do a better job. I'm going to have to add some glue stick to my washi tape here because my washi tape is not wanting to stick. So I will come back and do that another time. And then the prompt for today, and today is Wednesday, December 7th. It's a full moon today. 
The prompt for today is what memories do I want to bring forward into 2023? What are some of those threads or through lines of things that happened that I want to remember? Tomorrow, we're going to look at what are the things that I want to release? What are the things that I want to release? And so today, here I am looking at memories that I want to hold on to. And what was fascinating, and you can see I wrote going one way, and then I turned my journal and I wrote going the other way. One, I had a lot to say. Two, it's a fun way to add your own handwriting to your journals, but not have it be readable later. So I'm going to set aside my candle and my beautiful sacred objects where I can see them, but maybe I won't get paint on them. And I had a cup of ginger tea. I love ginger tea. Good morning, Jill. Great to see you. And on my cup of ginger tea was, I love the little sayings they have on the yogi teas. And that one's kind of blurry and hard to see, but it says, relate to your greatness and not to your weakness. Relate to your greatness and not to your weakness. And I thought it was really relative to, or relatable to, this idea of what are the memories that I'm bringing forward. And so it's inspired and completely a different idea for where I want to go creatively. So it started making me think about who am I and using I am statements to carry forward the gifts of this year. Um, thank you, Blanca. I just used a plain old Pentel felt pen wrote going one way and then turned my journal and wrote going the other way as well. Creates beautiful marks on, on the page and also makes it so that if I don't want other people to read it and still some of it is showing through, then some of it will <clears throat> still show through. So I'm pretty happy with this idea of bringing forward the I am's from 2022 that I want to take into 2023. Like I am strong, I am resilient, I am artist, I am love, I am energy. And so I thought I would do a fun night sky also in honor of the full moon, although we can't usually see that many stars on the full moon. And so I have this handmade foam stamp. This is just sticky back foam that I made and cut out these stars. I was at my friend Andrea's studio and she had an awesome die cut machine, but you could just as easily hand cut out these stars. So I have some thick fun foam and some sticky back fun foam and I made this stamp a while ago. So I'm going to use this star to create a nice eye and some stars that represent the memories that I want to carry forward with me. And I'm curious if anyone has um, a memory they want to share about what are the things that you're carrying forward? What are the things that you want to carry forward from this year into the next year? And I'm looking for some of my blues here. Maybe some of this dark violet. I've got my Nova paints here. Hmm. Maybe that gorgeous teal. So I'm just gathering up some, some different blues. I also have my white. I might mix in maybe even a little black or not. Some of this nice ultramarine blue. I think I want that instead of the cobalt's a little too bright for a night sky. So I've got a turquoise here, a thalo turquoise, a deep, deep purple, a couple of different blues, and some white. And I'm just going to start by creating a starry background. But I'd love to hear from you if you're watching live or in the comments if you're watching later. What are some of the memories that you want to take forward with you? What are some of the memories you want to take forward with you? And I want to kind of protect this image here, more or less. I don't care that much if it gets paint on it, but maybe I'll just fold that over a little bit. I always like to 
tucked these papers underneath so I don't get as much paint on my underneath pages. Let's just take a little piece of that. Not very sticky washi tape and stick it on there. So what are some memories that you are bringing forward? That's our prompt for today. What are memories that you're bringing forward? A pause and take a sip of tea before I dive in. And I'm going to use my cartilage wedge for spreading the paint. You could use a hotel key card or other kind of scraper. Old gift cards work great. And I want to just get a nice painty background going. I used a, a Pentel felt tip marker to do the writing, and I have no idea how much it's going to spread. I definitely don't think, oh, I love that color, that it's going to be super permanent. And you can see I kind of start my visual journaling pages in similar ways every day by starting with the writing then starting to bring in different colors of paint. And what I love about putting the writing down first is that it gets marks on the page and it gets my original marks on the page. Jill, this is the Golden Thalo Turquoise. It's a beautiful color. This is their Fluid Acrylic Thalo Turquoise. Um, I'm out of the, the Fluid or other, um, and this one is a, a Deep Indigo. Really loving that Deep Indigo. So that's where I'm going. Good morning from South Africa, Corinne. And hi, Lily, welcome. Great to see you both here this morning. So our prompt for today is what memories do I want to take with me into 2023 from 2022. Yesterday we talked about celebrations. I'm going to bring in some of this. This is a super dark quinacridone violet. And I'm just creating a bluey purple background to sort of create a night sky kind of effect. And I'm going to stamp some stars on top of that. This is going to be a pretty simple visual journaling spread. I did a lot of writing ahead of time to really capture some of those memories. And when I thought about it yesterday, I was thinking about it sort of scrapbooky like right? Like I was going to bring in some, let's see if this is too bright. This is an ultramarine blue. thinking I was going to go through some of my photos. It's a little bright, but it's pretty too. And look at my memories that way, right? Like I could definitely easily do a scrapbook of this year. We moved from California on the West Coast, Colorado in the mountains this year which was a, a long process. We started the process about a year ago while we made the decision to move the beginning of November. Our house went on the market in January, closed in February. It took us a couple of months to find a house. You know how it goes, moving is hard. And everything went really well. So there's all those memories. There's all these beautiful memories of exploring this gorgeous new place where we live. But when I sat down this morning to do my morning journaling, what came to me were what are the gifts and strengths from this year that I want to take with me? What are the gifts and strengths from this year that I want to take with me? So I'm getting kind of a... Mixed background here. I think I'm going to maybe add some water 
keep forgetting to bring my baby wipes over here, so I may have to go snag those. Baby wipes are one of my most favorite things to have in the studio because they are amazing for moving paint around the page, for smoothing things out, for pushing paint back. So I've sprinkled some water on my page. You can see a little bit of those wet dots there. And I'm gonna dry some of the paint in the background and then I'm gonna see if I can create some dots. I'm not sure my um, paint is wet enough, but we'll see. Lily, I love that you're bringing your open-mindedness, your open-mindedness. And when this technique works well, it creates these super cool marks and patterns. And mm, I got one there. I got a couple there. Like I said, my paint was already maybe a little bit dry. But it's a fun way to create some texture. Sometimes it works better than others. Sometimes I'm not patient enough at letting the water dry. I'm kind of wanting to push back some of this purple to some of those colors underneath. I love that I can still see some of my handwriting. That wet paint I know gets a little glary in the camera. Let me try that again up here. Just trying to push back some of those dark colors. But I'm thinking my paint, yeah, my paint is too dry already, so it's super dry here. What else are you guys wanting to bring with you? I love Lily said open-mindedness. I found a lot of strength and resilience that I want to bring forward into the to the new year. And I'm just thinking about where do I want to go next? Am I happy with the background? So this is the place where I love creating backgrounds and I could spend a lot of time playing here. I love just playing on pages. I think the backgrounds are my favorite part. And I love visual journaling as just a, a way to honor. So I'm taking some of that white back off again. Maybe we've got some clouds in the sky. Just creating more texture on the page, letting some of it dry. Is this, I, it's fun sometimes just to sit down and, you know, make art for art's sake. That's pretty, but I tend to really love making art that is meaningful and impactful. And visual journaling is one of the processes that I use for that. And I'm using inexpensive paper, and I can see I've gotten this paper really wet in the in the center, and that it's kind of coming out of the book. So one of the ways that I can fix that, and I intentionally picked this inexpensive paper to work with because I wanted to try it and see how it would work for journaling, is I just need to add some collage in here. And by just adding some collage paper, I can strengthen that up. So actually it would be fun to maybe add some of these words on here. 
So again, I tend to work very intuitively. I had, you know, an idea of where I wanted to go before I started this idea of honoring and celebrating my strengths. I'm going to get my matte medium out. I don't care if my paint is still wet. I'm just going to use my fingers to get a fair amount of that on there and on my collage paper as well. So I'm going to come back and just paint back over the, the top of this again. But this will just increase the integrity of my page. It's a fun quick fix when you're working in handmade journals or altered books where maybe you've taken some pages out or if you're working in a journal that um, the paper's a little more thin than you'd like, adding collage, adding gesso are both ways to kind of bring that page. And then I would probably come over here tomorrow and do that same thing to make sure that I seal the other side of the page. But this will keep us going for the moment and keep that page in there. I'm wiping my catalyst wedge off on this newsprint underneath me because that'll also get used as collage paper later and is a great way to repurpose paint, not waste paint, but also to not put as much of that acrylic paint back into the environment. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm having a little bit of allergies. Thank you, Corinne. And art can be both beautiful and meaningful. But for me, my most beautiful art is the one that starts with the most meaning. I'm just going to take a, another sip of tea here. And let's see, I'm going to come back in. I want to just make sure that this page fits in with the other pages or the rest of the page. It can kind of disappear into the background a little bit. And let's just grab, oh look, my palette knife has paper stuck to it. Lovely. And you can see I actually don't use a, a paintbrush that often on these pages. I tend to really like to create layers using palette knife, brayers, this amazing catalyst wedge. My husband and my kids, when I first started painting probably 10 years ago, gave this to me for Christmas. And I think they were just roaming around the art store looking for things that looked interesting and fun. Little did they know it would become one of my most favorite tools. I want to make sure that I get this really glued down. And I'm really loving this journey of going deeper into my own end of year reflection questions. I've been using this same list. I created it for my coaching clients a few years ago, and I always share it with them at the end of the year. But, you know, I would sit down and maybe take an hour or two and work through all 20. It's still not sitting in there quite right, but it's okay for now. All 22 questions. And this year, it's been a doozy of a year. For some of us, we started off the year with a lot of hope that things were going to be back to normal. And then it wasn't a normal year. I don't know if there is a normal after the couple of years of the pandemic. We had a lot of things happening globally and here in the United States that were distressing and distracting. I moved, which, you know, always takes a lot of energy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some stars on here with um, some white paint and a makeup sponge. And I have a lot of exciting things happening next year, a lot of things that I'm looking forward to. And it felt important to give myself the opportunity to just pause and go a little deeper. 
And so just spending this little bit of extra time with these questions, both in writing and then creating the visual representation of those questions has been inspiring so far. And I'm only on day three of the questions. I know everyone loves creating a word of the year and a, you know, fun spread for the word of the year for the new year. And I felt like I couldn't create that word of the year without doing some deeper reflection first on where have I been? Where have I been? And so that's my intention over the next few weeks is to work my way through this list and to come out with just some more clarity around what is it that I really want to create. And these are pretty messy stars, but I'm gonna, I'll go back and clean them up. So all the stars are really representing what are the strengths, lessons, learnings, the I am's that I want to take from this year. So as I was journaling this morning about my memories, I could see what those gifts were. So Corinne, I've just been sharing them um, day by day. So question number one, at some point um, I will share the whole list. I just haven't gotten there to, to do that yet. But the first question was, what was 2022 like for me? The second question was, what can I celebrate about 2022? And today is, what do I want to take with me? What memories do I want to take with me from 2022 into 2023? And I will be sharing the, the list. It's in a Google Doc right now, but I will get a PDF of those created and share a link where you can download those. And I will probably put them in my Teachable. So I'm going to come back in here with a brush and maybe touch some of these up, but I'm just filling the page with these happy little stars. This is a handmade foam stamp, a handmade foam stamp. I can hear one of my kitties pounding down the basement stairs. And I don't need to, to have them be completely perfect, perfectly imperfect is how I roll. I am definitely not a perfectionist. And I'm gonna to continue to add to these, write on them, may add more color to them. So I'm just trying to get the shapes of those stars down on the page. My cat's trying to convince me that it's time to eat and for him, it's always time to eat. You wanna come say hello? Come on. Yeah, I hear you. Probably everybody hears you. This is Diego. He loves to hang out with me when I'm creating in the morning but he's a big boy and it makes it kind of hard to reach my art sometimes. But yes, I see you. All right, off you go, bud. Instead of painting in your PJs with Manette, I should have called this painting in my PJs with cats because I often have my cats very present. I'd love to hear, yeah, complicated, Corinne, exhausting and surreal. That's such an incredible, like perfect description. And so when it came to looking at those celebrations yesterday, you know, it's, uh, I had to really look for what went right this year, right? What went right this year? Because it's so easy to just stay in the energy of, 
it was a complicated year. For sure. And sort of in terms of, you know, what's happening globally, I don't have a sense of what's coming, what to expect. Like it's um, better to have maybe no expectations given the uncertain nature of what's happening. So all I can really focus on is what's happening here within me, inside of my own little world, my own business, my own community and family and show up in service. I was on a call with a group of clients yesterday and one of my clients had a, a great question. So the question she had was, you know, just how can I be of more service? How can I be of more service to the world, to my community? And I think if I stay focused on service, I feel differently about things. And I'm in a new community. I'm used to being very active and engaged and I'm still sort of trying to find my way here, right? I haven't... Uh, completely put down roots yet and you know something for me that's super important are oops, having those roots I'm trying to only get that one star and that didn't quite work and where my little brush go all right so now I have this page of very messy little stars, but I really love the, the background and the colors of the blues. And I think I'm gonna add some white splatters as well to get that scattering of stars. I love doing paint splatters. It's also very messy. I tend to get paint all over everything, but that's okay. So dipping my brush in a little bit of water and in that white paint so that that paint is pretty thin on there. And then just tapping my brush across the page. Really get even more of that effect of that just starry night sky. You could hand paint or draw the stars. You could collage the stars. And you can hardly even see that I've added that piece of collage paper in the center, which is what I wanted. I'm trying to decide where I'm going to go from here. Like, I love the, the simplicity of this page. So I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I definitely, I talked about this yesterday. I want, I'm going to add some writing on here and I want to be really certain that my paper is dry so that I don't destroy the, the tips of my pens. I shared also yesterday one of my favorite pens for writing over the top of acrylic paints is this Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica. Works really well goes on almost like a gel pen. But my intention is to really, and it's not quite dry enough yet, bring in the energy of I am as I go into this new year. And I'm wishing I had a black Posca in front of me. So one of the ways that I've had glimpses of and that I want to feel going into the new year is radiant. So I am radiant. And these pens aren't making me happy because I'm being impatient. So I'm just going to take that back off again. Let's see what else we got over here. So there's a nice and much big fatter one. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer real quick. And while I'm doing that and letting it dry, 
Anybody else want to share? How, how would you, if you were using an I am statement, what would be really empowering or inspiring to go into 2023 with? So Lily said open-minded. I am open-minded. But what else? All right, let's see if that's dry enough. Sipping on some nice ginger tea this morning. So if all these little stars just simply hold the energy of I am. I'm alive. I survived the year, right? I am strong. I am love. One of the things that I have been really focusing on this year is that the more I stay in the energy of love, the better I feel, the more I take care of myself the more energy I have to give to others. I believe that I am energy. I am the energy and the light of the stars. I am resilient. This year showed me a lot about that. Moving houses always brings up a lot of uncertainty, so I want to just go back to those basics of I am safe. Feeling safe, I think, is so important to all of us and can often be I am creative. I love that. Often can be the thing that stops us from moving forward and taking action is uncertainty. I also... After this year of moving and doing my journaling so far, I realize that I am clear, right? I am clear about where I'm going, what I want. And I would put, I am artist. And I really tried in my journaling to look at the energy, the emotions, the feelings that I wanted to bring, and not the roles that I play. Like, I could so easily fill a page, as all of you can, with I am wife, I am mom, I'm business owner, I'm auntie, daughter, girlfriend, like, all the things, sister. So it's easy to think about the roles we play instead of how do we want to feel going into the new year. And again, everything we're doing is really going to help us move towards finding that perfect clarity and word or phrase to capture the magic of how we want to enter into the new year. And I like on some of these smaller ones, just remembering that I am, right? I am grounded. It's really important to me to make time for my creative and spiritual practices in the morning. They keep me grounded. And when I'm grounded, I tend to be calm. It's important to me to feel connected to self, to spirit, to others. And if you're playing along with me, if you're playing along with me, whether you're watching live or watching the replay and you're playing with these reflection questions, I'd love to see what you're creating. You can do hashtag painting in your PJs with Minette or tag me at Dr. Minette Riordan on Instagram. 
and share what it is that you're up to as well. I'm going to borrow lilies because I really loved lilies and I think it's a, an essential quality to cultivate, especially in this day and age. I am open-minded. I am accepting. Hmm. I'm going to borrow Bianca's, or, sorry, Blanca's here too. I am creative. Another one I've been looking a lot at this year is there's been a lot of loss and grief is I am, oops, that was a W, I am whole. I am abundant. I'm definitely grateful. Big part of this year has been about creating home. So I am home. And also just continuing to cultivate presence. Presence with myself, presence with others through deep listening. I am presence. So here I have my simple page of stars to remind me of the energy that I want to take with me into 2023 with the energy of I am. And I feel like it still needs a little bit of color. So I just got a yellow Posca and I'm going to come in and just add some yellow dots. This is, uh, I love the backgrounds and I love this sort of fine-tuning as well of just adding more character and marks, putting even more of my energy presence and my own creativity into the page. And pages can come together like this simple and quickly. We don't have to spend a ton of time on these questions. Kind of wondering if I added just a little bit of yellow. What might happen? Knowing if I don't like it, I can paint over it. Hmm, I can't decide. So I'm gonna just leave that one. Maybe I'm gonna add one more yellow one over here. My pen's not dry, so my pen's totally smearing. You like the yellow? Awesome. It definitely makes those stars stand out a little bit more. So maybe I'm going to just do a couple of those. And I might come back in. So I'm going to have to come back in and add those words again there, but I just a few of those stars. Though when I get started adding that yellow, I'm like, okay, that one's fun. Maybe I just want to keep going. And again, this is, I've done the hard work, right, of figuring out what the page is going to be, what I want it to look like, and now I just get to have the fun and, and the play of where do I want to go from here? What else does the page need? You know, do I want to sharpen up these stars a little bit? I don't think so. I kind of really dig the just sort of abstract looseness of this handmade stamp on the page. Just that little bit of yellow, but I'm feeling the call maybe for just adding, what if we added just some of this fluorescent pink. And it's very interesting. I was watching a video from Kasha Avery this morning, who's the founder of Wanderlust. And she was talking about how when you pick a, start a new journal to like have a color palette and only use those colors 
in a journal, and I thought that was a clever idea. It's not one that I've tried before, but what I've noticed as I've been just intuitively working in this journal is that I've really kind of stayed in primary colors, black and white. So I haven't done a lot of funky colors. I've used a lot of just variations of red, blue, and yellow, or combinations thereof, except for this, this turquoise. Okay, I'm loving the pink, even though it's making the page a little fussy and busy. That's kind of the way I like it, and it kind of holds that energy of there's a lot going on within me, a lot of memories that I'm holding and carrying, a lot of hopes for what I want to bring forward, but I love just that little pop of pink on there to really finish off the page. Thank you, Blanca. I appreciate that so, so much. So I have a lot of fun playing with all of the things, and, you know, I am just coming up with ideas on the fly for these pages and I'm okay if I don't love them because everything is paint overable as well, right? I can start over, add more, do something different. So I also approach this type of visual journaling from that energy of this is play and process. This is play and process, and I believe wholeheartedly in our need for more play and art as process. More play and art as process. I'm trying to see if this is dry enough to bring my words back before I forget what they were. Close enough. And there, my friends, is our day three prompt around a different perspective on what memories do I want to bring forward into 2023 and bringing those memories forward rather than the memories themselves. What are the gifts and the lessons? What are the gifts and the lessons? And the energy and really the magic that I want to take forward into 2023. So thanks for joining me today. I won't be live tomorrow. I have a super early morning dentist appointment and I will probably go live on Friday, which is not my normal day, um, to make up for that so I can keep up my rhythm for this week. So no live tomorrow, Thursday, December 8th, but I will be back again bright and early, painted in my PJs on Friday morning, December 9th. Have an amazing rest of your day, and thank you so much, especially for those joining me live. I love being here with you and hearing your voices and what's happening in your world. So here's to a day of painty fingers, my creative friends. I will see you all soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.